Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Chanel in the City. I'm your host, Chanel Omari, and I have an amazing guest today. We are so excited. He is one of the hottest stars of the popular uh, reality show, Summer House, one of my favorite shows on TV right now. He's a model, he's an actor, he's a jewelry designer, and he's a hockey coach. I don't know how he has time for anything, and he's hot. Please welcome Luke Gulbrandson. First of all, how are you feeling? Um, from- uh, I feel good. I feel good. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it took me quite a while to, to get better when I had it. And um, I do get some frequent, like pretty bad headaches and some brain fog type stuff. Um, but I'm good. I mean, every day. That's kind of the people I look up to and I bring on the podcast, people who really tell their truth. So, you know, with that being said, let's first let's get into and also people who work hard. You know, you're working on a jewelry line. You're a hockey coach. You're a star of one of the hottest shows on TV right now. You're an actor. You were recently on um, Flight Attendant, one of my favorite shows. It's so hot right now. We're going to talk about that. How do you have the time for all this? And talk to us about like how that's going. Well, first off, <laughs> I like I'm so bad at taking compliments. I'm like, oh, I'll probably blush. But um, thanks for the kind words. It's very sweet, very kind. Um, and the question was, well, how do I have time for all this? All this. Uh, I mean, you know, I feel like you just find a way. Um, I, I, there's plenty of days where I don't have time for sure. But um, when you love doing so many different things, you just need to find the time. I I, um, I couldn't imagine not, you know, working with the kids in hockey. It's, it's my first love. So I have to do it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, um, I always take pride in, in being able to do as much as you can. Um, I think as, as people, both men and women, uh, like I, I named my, my fragrance, my men's fragrance, which is also very unisex, which so like whatever, but, um, it, um, it's called Renaissance man. Um, and I named it that because my brand, um, Arco, I want it to be for a Renaissance man or woman. I want it to, you know, it's, it's like the blue collar mining town of Minnesota with New York city luxury kind of combined, but I want it to be like uh how what i what i think is great for people is is multifunctional like chop wood in a hand lead but put a blazer on and go dressed up in it right um so and, badass yes <laughs> well i just i wanted to make you know and i want it to be super comfortable and fit well and stuff but i want it to be able to, to be used in in so many different ways and, and that's how i am as a person and and i think that for people the more that you can do even if it's something you don't really want to do but you're like i'm going to conquer that or i'm going to try and achieve a goal in doing that um, the more you can do, the more powerful you are, the more knowledge you have, um, as a person and the less you need to rely on other people to do things. Um, you know what I mean? And, and I think that that's super beneficial, um, to, to people as a whole. I mean, that's just how I look at it. So I always challenge myself to always try and learn new things or do new things. Um, and that's really just because I, I kind of take pride in doing as much as I can. And like I said, at the end of the day, if you need to rely on, on yourself instead of other people all the time, that's. It's a pretty good thing. <laughs> I love how you say that the Renaissance, it's a unisex fragrance for women and men. Where can we buy that right now? Where can we purchase it if we'd like? Yeah, you can buy it on my e-com shop. It's just arcoshop.com. Um, that's all I have. I'm not in any uh, retail or anything right now. I'm, I'm in the process of actually uh, talking with big retail and kind of moving into that. Um, but, but right now I like, uh, I, I had to start out small, you know, I'm just a one man wrecking crew. I don't, I don't have a team working with me. And, um, you know, I, fortunately my folks will, will handle shipping and some stuff. Um, but, but, you know, I, I try and tackle as much as I can on my own. And, uh, you know, I, I, I take pride in, in being, um, very personal with my customers as well with like, you know, handwritten notes and just knowing that I'm crafting the product for them. And, um, I want to keep it small, but at the same time, if I can't, I need to go bigger to an extent. So I'm I'm looking into that stuff right now. I think that's what I love about you too, is that you're, you're, you always make things intimate where you, you embrace and encourage, you know, women to be their badass ass selves and men. I don't think I've had like a guy, you know, like that's cool. That kind of has done that before. So I think (laughs) it's going to be a hit. I think, I think once we wear, we're going to have like Luke in us and we're going to be able to like conquer anything. You know what I mean? Well, it's, you know, I, I mean, listen, if that's how I was, I'd sell a lot of it. <laughs> um, but no, I, um, you know, I do have a women's fragrance called Her Name is Lily. Um, I mean, clearly most men are probably not going to wear it. it it's very uh, 
feminine, you know, um, mm-hmm. my sister, I have two sisters, uh, hence why I, I'm like, you know, I'm a big advocate for women and stuff. I was raised with, with them and, um, I, it's, it's just what I think is right. But I, I, um, my, my youngest sister wears her name is Lily. And then my oldest sister wears the Renaissance man. So, yeah. So it's, That's it is cool. Lily. there's, there's a, there's a, yeah. there's a scent for every woman and every yeah. man. And every man. There That's you go. Great. I love yeah. that. Before we're going to jump into Summer House, I, you know, when you, so I'm going to share something with you. I played hockey in high school on the girls. Did you really? I was the goalie. That was the <laughs> one thing I was good at. Don't ask me why. And every, the only reason I became popular actually was because hockey at the time, I was at a Jewish private girls school, an only girls school. And no, sorry, not an only girl. It was co ed, but I, it was an only girls team. So they needed someone who was like, strong and I was strong, you know, I'm strong at the time, a little heavy set and someone who just like didn't take shit, shit on the court. And <laughs> it just was crazy. I was really good. I always won for us. But one thing like that happened to me, people would always get in my head. And I like how you said that you, um, you don't let that like bother you. You don't, you don't let that get in, in your way. You always like to get a challenge. So, and over, you know, conquer a challenge. So I think that's really cool that you don't think you're above things. A lot of people, you know, they enter celebrity world and they're like, you know what, I'm going to leave those other jobs that fulfilled me. I'm going to leave, you know, but that's so cool of you. You're like, no, I want to do it myself. I want to learn how to not rely on other people. I want to learn. I just think that's an important lesson for, for younger people and for myself or everyone who feels that they are going to fail because they're relying on others. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. One thing I want to say um, just to touch on kind of what you said about like celebrity fame type stuff is um, I'm never going to quit doing what I do. Um, you know, I, even before I started doing the reality stuff, it was like, kind of like, um, a question of, do I go that route because of my acting career? Is it going to have an impact on it? And of course I took it as a challenge to be like, well, I'm going to do both. <laughs> yes. Which um, you are doing by the yeah, way. Well, I'm, I'm trying and, and, you know, God willing, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Um, but, but my whole outlook on, on as far as fame and, and stuff like that is concerned and, maybe it's it I don't know but I always think the only reason people are famous is because people put them on a pedestal um why do they put them on a pedestal I I don't I don't know I've I've never liked it um because I always think that like we all go to work we all put our, our pants on the same way we all are trying to get a paycheck we all do this we all do that right um you go to set like you're an actor on set so what makes me better than the doctor or nurse that's saving somebody from COVID right now or an EMT or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so as far as I'm concerned, like I- I'm not into the whole fame thing. It-, it clearly happens. It's life. Um, but me as a person is we're all just people. Some people get lucky, you know, some people don't, but we're all, we're all on the same playing field. Of course. Like that, that's just my view. Um, and, me too. and yeah, so like fame is fame, but it's only fame because people make people they put them on that. Pedestal. Yeah. People make and, people famous. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm always like, well, why is it like that? When like, so-and-so is like doing something like so amazing and it's, but it's just the world we live in, you know, but, but that's just my, sorry, I'm grabbing my water, but it's that's okay. just my, um, that's just my whole outtake on the fame thing. So like, I think it's, it's cool. Whatever people have idols and stuff, people they look up to, but um, I think the real people, in particularly right now, like with the essential workers and people that have done so much with COVID, because this has just been such a crazy year for all of us, um, you know, and if you do have the a platform um, to because of fame or whatever you want to call it, then use it to help people. I think that's very important. You know yes. what I mean? So I'm with you. <clears throat> Equal rights. Binge that show. Love that show. Great show. <laughs> HBO Max. If you guys are listening and you haven't watched it. Go watch it and stream it. It's worth it. Luke makes a surprise appearance. First episode at knocks it out of the park. Talk to us about how you got that role. And, um, you know, how was it, you know, acting with Kelly Kuko? Like, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right no, now. No, it's, it's not. It's Kaylee. <laughs> cool. Kaylee it's Kuko. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See my Long um, Island accent. You could hear it. But how was it um, acting with her? Because she's an A-lister. She's well known. Yeah. You know, yeah. talk to us about that. Um, well, you know, I'm just like any other actor and until you're real established and people start coming to you with things, um, you have to audition. And uh, I, we had actually wrapped um, Summer House and I had come back to the city and my, my agent messaged me saying, hey, I've got something you want, I want you to read for this, you know, and um, I had gone in, I just read and apparently casting liked it, sent it, and they liked it. So I got the part, but 
um, you know, um, as far as working with Kaylee and, and, you know, the, the whole team, um, that's involved, you know, between directors, producers, writers, everybody, um, it was, it was a real treat for me. Um, I mean, you know, anything that I feel like HBO puts their hands on. And then when you're working with such talented people like Kaylee, um, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty fun experience. Um, it's really great. And it, it, you know, it's like, that's what we all want. We want to be on those sets doing those, filming those movies or those shows, um, you know, so many weeks every year. Um, <clears throat> so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I made a lot of friends, uh, you know, it was, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, you know, Kaylee is extremely talented and she was super kind to me. Um, I had a lot of fun working with her. We danced the night away. It's most dancing I've done. I, I think I said, uh, I said that in a tweet to Andy, um, Andy Cohen, uh, it was the most dancing that I'd done this past year. Cause you know, everything <laughs> shut down. um, but it was great. Yeah. She's really great. We had, we had good, good, good chats. And, um, I, I really, I also, I look, I look up to her a lot in the sense of uh, all the work she does outside of acting, just with like the animals and, and how her love is for animals and stuff. And you can see that, which I think is just great. So, yeah. And they got renewed. They're up for Golden Globes. They're like, I mean, you know, all that hard work that, you know, everybody puts into a project in the, in the creative side and um, to see them get rewarded, um, it's pretty awesome. You're always rooting for them. You're always rooting for people in this business that, that put their heart and soul into it, you know what I mean, to, so to get that second season and to be nominated for everything that they've been nominated for. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats on an amazing, amazing show. And also, I mean, another show, we're going to talk about Summer yeah. House. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's talking about it. Favorite show, season premiere, amazing. First episode, you all knocked it out of the park. Um, how was it coming to the house? Because, okay, so I don't want to give a lot away, but you, you know, come to the house a little bit later than the rest of your friends. And <laughs> how was that for you when you come into the house and you're living I, six straight weeks with them? I mean, listen, I, you know, I, I was, it was a drag not being able to be there on day one, but unfortunately with, with COVID and all that shit, it wasn't able to be there. I mean, I, I you know, I make sure I was healthy. They were taking every precaution they could to make sure we were all safe, which is, which is amazing. Um, anyway, uh, going to the house, I mean, I was just excited. I, I had, you know, I, I've said this to, to people before it, it was, I had been home at my lake house for like five months, basically with by myself and my dog my family sometimes but and I renovated my lake house and um I love my time away don't get me wrong I needed it I really did um and I got a lot accomplished when I was there and um it was it was hard to leave but I, I was looking forward to seeing everybody you know I, I miss them um I, I felt very lucky um in the sense that <clears throat> I knew I was going to be with my friends in you know uh, a be big beautiful home with a pool and, and a backyard and tennis court and I mean instead of being stuck in a New York apartment like I mean I was very thankful and grateful like uh, that that was my mentality I couldn't wait to just have fun with them and I felt very lucky to be there totally that's really no I mean it you're blessed that you have six amazing like well it's not six now it's like 10 yeah. of you sharing a house <laughs> instead of like being with your parents like me living at home and I'm about to like pull my hair out literally <laughs> but um you know you guys couldn't go out you really couldn't use you really had to rely on each other how do you think this season differed from the last season and what should we expect to see out of you I guess this season well I mean you know without being able to really um go out having a quarantine um it, it definitely was different <laughs> oh man because you, you know um it's nice to get a break sometimes um but being stuck in a house with people um while well, things are very uncomfortable sometimes it's just like uh yeah I mean, needless to say, I, I, I went for a run every day <laughs> not necessarily you helped, I gotta say just you to clear my head you held your ground pretty. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I mad respect for you. I have yeah. mad respect that you held your ground. Um, it's a it was, tough bunch. It's a tough bunch sometimes in general when you're with your friends and you have to be someone who has to stand up for yourself where everybody doesn't always agree with, you know, or. Yeah. I mean, listen, you, you know, the only thing you can control is yourself in, 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 in any situation. And, um, you know, am I perfect? Absolutely not. 
Um, I'm a person, I, I make mistakes, but I, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, it was a very, for me, it was a very frustrating summer, needless to say. Um, uh, and, uh, but, but, but also I had a ton of fun. I mean, you know, I, like I said, it, there was, there were, there were, there were highs and lows, you know, for me, um, throughout the summer. And like I said, when, when you can't control other people and what's being said and how things are, 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 are being tossed around, you, you just are like, you, sometimes your head spins, you're like, I don't, I don't understand you. I don't get it. I'm like, <laughs> throwing the towel. Like, I definitely think it's, it's probably going to be, I mean, the best season I, I think so far. Um, you know, I, I, there's, you're going to see, I feel like you see growth in, in a lot of people, um, including myself. And um, there's, there's there'll definitely be a little bit of drama. Yes, I love drama. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you know what I love about Summer House, though, and I, don't, I love about you guys, because I, I, I hung out around you in real life. And you guys mm -hmm. are re the same as you are off camera as on camera, which is so yeah. cool because you don't see that a lot. Like, that's authentic, A. B, yeah. you guys know how to have fun. C, you know how to bring the drama, but not too much where it becomes so dark that you can't even watch. It's like, because you guys uh -huh. come to resolution, and that's a really uh -huh. mature way of life. Depends on who you're talking about. Well, <laughs> well I'm going to get into a couple. That's why I'm, I mean, right. I'm going to get into a couple of your, your friends and cast members. Let's talk yeah. about, okay. We'll talk about your relationship with Sierra, who I love. Yeah, she's great. The she's moment great. I meet Sierra, we all do. We fall in love with her. Just an amazing kind. Everything you say about her is true so far, what we see. Hannah, love Hannah. <clears throat> Down to earth girl, also cool. But we come into the season and we see Hannah having a certain opinion in you. And I, I want to know where you stand right now. What was your intention oh, in general for yourself? Because I think I think you need to, yeah, you, it's fair for you to tell your side as well of the story. Because she thought well, you were dating, right? I, I don't know how we were dating because I, I she was clearly seeing somebody, but we were dating, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm at a loss. I don't understand her. Like I, I'm anyway, basically, you know, so the summer, the first summer that I met Hannah, I had, I'm not using my ex as an excuse, but at that point in time, I was three months removed from a three year relationship that clearly I was not in a very good place. I feel like that happens. I'm a human. Okay. Oh yeah. Like, you were very honest um, about that, right? You were very um, honest well, about it. I was, but Hannah never relayed those things to her friends ever. She would say, I don't know what he's doing. He's just leading me on. He says one thing. He says this. He says that. I'm like, uh, dude, I literally just said I'm question. three months removed. I clearly am a mess. I am smitten with you. I do like have fun with you. We do flirt, right? But I don't know if we're going to be friends. I don't know if we're going to date. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know right now, I can't move forward with you on that level because this is where I'm at. I mean, Hannah was sleeping with her ex-boyfriend that summer. She was dating other people that summer. And my response to that was, Hannah, that's okay. Like you can right. do that. Like, and as a matter of fact, you don't need, you don't need to tell me that because I'm not your boyfriend. You have no responsibility to tell me any of that. Live your life. And if you meet somebody, I, I'd, I'd be happy for you. Like, I enjoy my time with you and I have fun with you and we flirt and, and she would always be like, yeah, I'm on the same page. I'm on the same page as you. I'm on the same page. And I was like, cool. Like she never communicated with me ever. Like Luke, I'm in love with you. Luke, I like you so much. She never communicated that with me ever. It was always, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I just want to sleep with you. I just want to, I'm like, dude, I'm not sleeping with you. That'd be the worst thing that we could ever do. You know? Oh, yeah. Um. Anyway. And then, <clears throat> so after, after we wrapped filming, um, I got to see, you know, I, I got to see some things with Hannah with that had an impact on me, like with, you know, sometimes she throws people under the bus, which I don't agree with people that care about her. Um, and some of the and just disrespectful stuff and kind of on, like, I just was like, I can't date somebody that speaks like that or acts like that. It's just not my thing, but I love this girl. I have so much fun with it. And I'm not saying that she's a bad person because no. I'm not, I don't want to talk bad about, yeah, about no. Hannah because, because that's not it. But there were, I, I just, as a person, I'm not on the same, I, it, I don't agree with a lot of those things. 
but at the same time, I know that I have a lot of fun with her. And I know that like deep down, I have a lot, I care a lot about her. I, I really, I, I really do. And um, so I knew it wasn't going to go to that. And we, we had communicated, but it, it fell off at, after we, after the summer. Um, Hannah literally dated people and lived her life. Like we hardly talked period. Like I remember she came to dinner with like Lindsay, um, Stravi, like Danielle, and we were there. She came for five minutes and like took a picture to make to like for her Instagram make, and then she just bailed. We we're like to go hang out with her comedy friends or something. And I, we were all like, we're just like chopped liver here, <laughs> like what are, you know. And it wasn't. And it was. So my point is, we weren't like boyfriend and girlfriend. She like went and did like there was nothing. Um, and and it was one of those things where like I I felt like we were there for each other in a lot of ways. And she was for me and I was for her, but like we'd go to a comedy show and I would go and she'd like walk in with me. And then she'd just leave me in the corner to go hang with the comedy friends. And it was so uncomfortable, but I stayed because I cared about her and wanted to be a good friend. Cause that's what friends do for each other. Just an example. Um, and then, and then uh, as, as winter went on, I actually started dating somebody um, for like three months. Um, <clears throat> and then as spring happened, um, I had gone back to Minnesota <clears throat> and we communicated cause you know, all of a sudden, like maybe, maybe we'll film. I don't know. She we start talking more. I don't know. Um, but she, um, she, we were just, we just talked more. And during that time, our conversations weren't, it, there's no sexting. There's no like anything other than just like, what's up? Bird dog, how are you? Yeah, cool. Luke, let's FaceTime. Awesome. No problem. Love you. Miss you. How are you doing? Like that, like friend, friendly. So more like, like a sister friend. Like yeah. you guys. And I've even told her that. I was like, I was like, you're my, I was like, Hannah, you're like my, my sister. Like literally, I, like, a, you know, at this like point. You're my right, I'll always be there for you. I'll yeah, take a bullet 100%. for you. Got yeah. it. So that was really where your yeah. head was out and her head was, got it. Okay. Yeah. So then we had, and keep in mind, she never relayed to me ever other than I'm on the same page. I'm dating five guys right now. I'm living my life. Do you um, think if she said, I liked you directly? Cause I wonder the audience always asks me if the woman says they like the man directly, does that change anything ever? It, it probably would have changed with me in, in the sense where I would, I would have been more aware. Cause I, like, tent, I, yeah. I, I can't read her mind. Yeah. Right. Been um, open-minded probably to it. You probably have been more open to, Oh, okay. This is romantic. Like compartmentalizing, like, romantic yeah. versus friendship versus let me give this maybe a shot I, I mean I don't I'm I mean all I was getting was I just want to we'll hook up with you <laughs> that's all I was getting um you know um and 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 you know prior to our reunion Hannah actually um <clears throat> there was a time prior to that actually she she goes on podcasts and um you know what well, there was one time and I don't know if it was something she said about me or my past or whatever but it had really rubbed me the wrong way. And, and I, I just let it go. And then she went on a podcast again. And when I got out of my relationship, I was clearly in a very bad place. And, and I was talking to my mom on the phone one night and I had a few beers and I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Leave me alone. I hung up my phone. Um, and my mom was worried about me. So she had, she actually had reached out to Hannah to say, Hannah, like, I know you're, you're tight with Luke, but you check on him, make sure he's good. And then Hannah went on a podcast <laughs> And, and I, I kept my mouth shut. I, I never, never reacted poorly towards her. Um, I just, it, it really was a big sign to me that, and then, so when we went into the reunion, that's, you know, things are really awkward and between us, but, but that's kind of, that's basically what led up to that. And I, and I told her, I, I said, I, you can't, you can't treat people that care about you in this way. Cause it's not just me that you've done this to. So anyway, so, so I had already had a few red flags on like how things were with Hannah, but I always forgave her and I always was there and I always supported her. And I was always like, always, always, always trying to be nice and be the bigger person and forgive. And um, so when we, when we were going into this summer, she clearly, like I said, was FaceTiming me and stuff. And um, I was like, why? Like, why is she like screen? She always screenshot our FaceTimes and post them on her Instagram. And I was always like, cool, like no problem, like no problem at all, like whatever. You're like my friend. Like I don't. But as I started to piece things together, I was like, she's making it look like we're dating. We're not dating. I'm like, mm. this is like not okay. <laughs> right. Um, you need but, to constrain. Yeah, it was. It was. And, and her and I had a conversation actually in, in, in April where she's like, what are we? And I'm like, 
what do you mean what are we i thought we were friends and she's like no like what are we and i told her i said i like well, i think we're we're better off as friends and like and her exact response to me was it's a good thing we never hooked up because that would make this harder and i was like that's why i didn't hook up with you like in that sense and that's why i have a hard time with like with with the the like the attacking that happened in the, in the first two episodes if you like trying to like comprehend that because i would never treat somebody the way that like that like she's like she is clearly treating me after everything that i'm telling you right now right that you now know i would never treat somebody like that ever um like i, I just it's just not not my thing um i i like I said, I, at the end of the day, I, I really thought that, I mean, two weeks prior to filming, Hannah apparently s- dating this, this guy or whatever. And w- when I was driving to my lake house, I was literally in my truck talking to her. And she's like, yeah, like I met this guy. And I was like, awesome. That's cool. She's like, yeah. She's like, yeah. And I was like, well, so what's up? Like, did you like hook up with him? Yes. She's like, yeah. And I was like, well, good for you. <laughs> you know? Right. You're like, like trying to be a good, awesome. right. You're trying to be like yeah. a good bro friend. Like, yeah. And- and, and, um, and I was like, well, that's really cool. So, you know, I'm under the impression cause we talked that she's clearly seeing somebody. Um, and then when I got there with Sierra, like, I, I really thought that Hannah would like support me and be like, she's awesome. And, you know, regard like you, like she's beautiful and she's awesome and I'm happy for you. And like, give me the same respect and support that I've always given her always. And, um, I thought I would have gotten that and I didn't. And, and, and it was super frustrating. Um, it, I'll, like I've, I, <laughs> I don't really struggle with like stress and anxiety. Um, the past few weeks I've had the worst anxiety and stress I've probably ever dealt with because like, like I literally had a physical today and I was <laughs> like, told my doctor, I was like, dude, I'm like, like I have like heart palpitations. <laughs> I, like I think it's because of anxiety. Um, because I don't know what lie or bullshit's going to come up, come out of her mouth next. Um, and, and it really sucks because it's not fair. Um, if I, if I do something wrong to you, or if I really do treat you wrong, I'll own that shit. I'll own it. And I'll literally be like, I completely fucked up and I'm sorry. Um, and, and I do feel like that first summer, um, you know, a lot of the, my actions and things I said could have led her on for sure. Um, but I also know that away from that, I did tell her my truth and I didn't, I said, you can live your life. You can do things. I was never, never bad. And I wasn't a fuck boy. I wasn't sleeping with her and sleeping with this girl and sleeping with this girl. I was just single guy out of relationship living, trying to figure it out. Um, you know, I, I didn't know what else I could do. I mean, I, I basically painted a picture for like how I felt and where I was. So, you know, um, it was the first couple of episodes, it's, it's hard to watch. And then, um, you know, just to see her lean in on these things, knowing that it's all bullshit on her end. Um, and I shouldn't say bullshit because maybe she does feel that way, but like the whole year after we filmed, it was, there was none of that was apparent. None of, none of what she brought to my attention was apparent. And I just think it, it sucks. I I know I would never treat her like, like, like what the way she's treated me. Um, and, and it's, 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 it's just not cool. I don't, I'm not friends with people that act like Hannah does. I'm not, I don't, I don't associate with them. Um, I will have nothing to do with Hannah. I mean, I'll be civil with her a hundred percent, but I'm not like, it's, it, you you can't trust that you're just a rung on their ladder and then eventually you know, they step on that rung to get the attention they need or to get what they think is going to get them more success or to try and entertain whoever and and i don't know that's just not me um and i you know one thing i i <laughs> i said uh you know with the the inside and out thing um about hannah I, you know i cut some slack for that and I get it. It makes sense. It sounds very disrespectful, but you know, my thought process behind it was that, um, you know, Sierra as a person would, would never have, um, she wouldn't be disrespectful. She has a respect 
She respects herself and the people around her. So when I sit inside and out, I think Hannah's beautiful. Uh, it's just on, on the inside, like the things that she's done to me personally um, and, and others around that I've seen and, and, and how she, some like the vulgar, like things that she said, like, I, I'm sorry, but like, I just, that's what I meant. And I meant it. Like, it's just really what I think. So um, do I think she's a bad person? I don't think she tries to be it. I don't think she tries to be malicious. I don't think she's aware of it. Maybe. I don't know. But right now it's like, I don't get it. Anyway. Well, let's move on with Lindsay. Cause um, you know, you and Lindsay in the upcoming attractions, we see, we don't know, but we see that supposedly you and Lindsay bond um, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, mentally, I can put it <laughs> that way. Yeah. Can I just say something, Luke? I, I had a feeling you guys were, and this is why I love Lindsay. I love you. I think you guys are real really real like you don't let fame get to you and that's very important see here's what the audience needs to understand once you get fame i've been there i had 15 minutes of it whatever it comes and goes that's what's the most humbling part about it but it doesn't give you the right to treat other people like shit and i think people need to understand that memo you and Lindsay are great because you stand up for the underdog and i think you stand up morally which is really hard to do for the underdog we see you guys though in the coming attractions bonding hooking up can you give us a little bit about what leads up to that? Do you feel that you just connect to her a lot more? Well, I can tell you right now, Lindsay and I definitely, um, we have a connection for sure. Um, and there's like, we're like, like, yeah. Um, anyway, she, um, Lindsay, Lindsay has a really, really big heart. She, she really does. Uh, she's a big heart and, um, I think that maybe that gets taken advantage of sometimes because she, she is empathetic and has a big heart um, and she'll get attacked, <laughs> um, which I don't think is fair. Uh, but I, I definitely think that um, I, I connect with Lindsay on that level where, I mean, listen, like we, that's just who we are. There's a connection because we're on the same level with, as people, like with, with how we would treat someone or, or respect people and those around us. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because we're in our 30s. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my 30s. I, I think the 30s. What's up with the 30s, man? We're different than the these millennials. Um, we're, we're technically millennials, but we're Gen whatever, X, I guess. Yeah, I have no idea. That's I don't where the disconnect know. is. It's like the maturity. You know, I think that's where a lot of people are going to grow. Speaking of that, who do you who are you the closest with um, in the house now and during quarantine? And who are you the least closest with, you would say, and why? Well, I mean, it was Hannah. I mean, Hannah, I think she was probably closest to me and Paige, but <laughs> she's probably just close to Paige. But um, I'm, I'm, mo you know, it's tough because at the end of the day, like, I, I feel like I'd be a lot closer to Kyle too, but he's working so much all the time. But I see, I see like Lindsay and Carl and Danielle all the time. Like, they're my, my crew. And You're, it's a funny good they're like, You're a good foursome. You're a good foursome. They're, they're like friends with, with, um, they're really good friends with a lot of my friends and stuff too now. So, oh, that's cool. um, which is really great. Like, like Carl was hanging out with two of my buddies the other day and they were like, you know, come hang. And I had to work. I couldn't, but, um, they, uh, like they, so they all just like hang out. So, I mean, I, I'm, listen, I, I feel like, you know, as far as, as everybody, I feel like I'm fairly close to everybody. I mean, clearly I'm really close with, with those three. Um, and then, um, I'm also very close with, with Stravi. Um, oh, yeah. Steven and then uh, Danielle's boyfriend I'm very close with him Robert um, he's cool you've mentioned you never really got anxiety um your in your life besides now how do you cope with it because I deal with anxiety and depression a lot and I don't know it's like I get in my head and so do the listeners and I, I would love to know from your side how you've coped with it yeah you know for me there's things in, in life that um you know will will come to fruition or work their, their way out of, out of the, the dirt, I should, should say, and, and show themselves. And um, when, when you're dealing with a situation or something, if something's on your mind, you have anxiety, whatever, I, I tend to, I have outlets. My outlets are like, I'll go and create new jewelry or do woodwork, or um, I like to put my mind on a task. Um, mm. And like, I love riding my Harleys. That's one of my favorite things to do. It like literally is my therapy. Um, I play my guitar and I'll write music because it's a way of writing it down and getting it out in, in that sense. Music is a great thing for me. Um, 
which I find to be very therapeutic. So those are some ways that, that like I find, um, those are the best ways for me personally, um, to, to help with anxiety and stuff because, because it's, a, it, it, it just, I don't know, it just helps. And then I also am a faithful guy. So I say a little prayer, you know, um, oh, yes. so, spirituality, yeah. we need that man. Yeah. We really I think need that. Faith is very important, but listen, it, it, I, everybody, I know pushing on people, but I always say like, if it wasn't for my faith, I don't know where I'd be. So, um, but I, um, but, but so those things, and I also think it's important to talk to people. I was like, you know, as a guy, I always had it in me to never talk, um, to just hold things in and, and be the tough guy or this and that. But what happens when you do that is, um, it ends up coming out in a way that's not good, or you just dig yourself in in deeper into a hole that you're already in. It's not good. Um, having friends that genuinely care about you and will listen and you can just open up to, like, you should be able to talk to people. Um, I I just think that that's important too. Um, so, so those are things that work for me. And then I'll meditate even like lately I've been meditating (laughs) like because I'm telling you, man, I, I have just been like, this is something else. Like it's off the wall right now for me. Um, but I, um, trying to try to find a way to get through it, you know? Um, I say you got to have thick skin and, and everything. And, uh, you know, you have thick skin thing, you know, like I said, when, when someone judges your character based off, off bullshit, um, it, it, it's hard to, to not take that personal because you are a person and you have emotions and when you know, <laughs> I don't, I'm not even going to go down there, but, but I, um, those are ways that, that help me. Um, I, I think so. So, yeah, so, so that's it. I, I, I try not, I don't take medicine or anything. I don't have anxiety. Usually I'm pretty good. No, I know that's great it's advice like, though to like, yeah. now that you're saying when I do suffer through anxiety and you're being open about it, that's some things that we could actually utilize. Like, I love that whole, you know, utilize a task, like start working on something who cares yeah. if you're good or bad at it. That really yeah. does help you, you know? Yeah, it definitely helps. It helps a lot. Um, it's hard in New York. I feel like, cause like yeah. when you're here, it's like, I pick up my guitar, but when you're, when you're, when you're not, it's, it's a lot easier to, to hop on a motorcycle or get out in the woods. I always feel like, um, you know, something that you learn in, in studying when I was, I studied biology and I was in medicine, but, um, you know, people that tend to live in city environments, their like cancer rates and things like that become higher compared, compared to somebody else that lives in, in a more rural or, um, natural environment. Um, and I always say that like getting out in nature, if you can learn to appreciate the little things, like just a, like a hummingbird flying around and just be like, that's so awesome. And like, just really appreciating like that. There's a tree there, but that tree like started like a, this little thing and it grew and it's like, there's so much going on underneath the ground that we don't like this living. Thing. But when you think about those things and you go out there and you, 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 you take like that stuff in, I, that's another thing that really like helps me, um, like when something bothers me, just getting out in nature and, and being around like the natural world and like things that are like, they don't have anxiety. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Or I know that's why I, my ex-boyfriend used to teach me. Like, he's like, Chanel, the best, two best things you could do in life is doing things on your own and living a simple life on a farm. You'll be the happiest person. And like, honestly, that's uh-huh. what I want to do. I just want to have a family. I'll do my Zooms, my podcast from the farm. Yeah. And then I just want to be with my husband and my kids and my animals. And I don't get like, that's a cool life. That's a very yeah. happy life. It's a rich yeah. life, you know? No, it is. It you is can, a rich life. You can relate more than most people. New Yorkers look at me like, yo, you're crazy. You know, you're from New York. <laughs> like, really? You want to go to a farm? Yeah. Um, no, what was your funny. favorite thing, by the way, about the summer house? And what was your least favorite thing about the summer house this summer? My favorite thing. Well, there's a lot of favorite things. There's a lot of, a lot of good, good times and good moments. Um, you know, like I said, my, for me, I just... I mean, I felt so lucky being out there that, I mean, having a favorite thing is, um, I don't know. It, Cause you just, I mean, you just, like I said, I feel, I'm so, it was just so lucky to be there. Um, so I don't really have a favorite thing. I, I just felt lucky to be lucky. there and, and just being there itself is my favorite thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a whole, yeah. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, and my least favorite thing, I mean, clearly trying to, to deal with all the, stuff with with Hannah the drama you try and listen we're all different 
right? We all have different opinions on things and different views on life and things. There's gonna be drama, like duh, we're stuck together. Right. Um, but at the end of the at the end of the day, there's there's a, a respect and a love um and a care that we all have for each other. Um and I just didn't I just didn't get that um in 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 my situations with her. Um and because of that it 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 was it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. No, I, my heart goes out to you. I could listen. I could relate. And in general, people in life, I always say I compare it to high school. You know, you're always going to feel like you're in high school and it's up to you to grow and evolve past that. You know what I mean? And you either want to be with the peep, the kids, like I always say, you either want to be with, um, they call themselves the, the tres amigos. Now it's the cuartos. Amigos. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Don't say the cuatro amigos. Cause I don't want to offend them. Oh yeah. You're right. Cause Robert, I guess it's five cinco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could say that because my mom's Colombian, so I'm part Latina. But anyway, yeah. no one knows that. But that anyway, awesome. um, can you? So let's go. I, I just wanted to touch base before I, we wrap up. Yeah, we can talk as long as you want, as long as Casey. I'm literally. I, chill. I, I wanted I, I just, to. So we see. Uh, by the way, so we see you um, working like physical labor at the summer house, which I thought was so cool. You were like <laughs> actually building jewelry and carving it from your bare hands with like trees like I've never I don't think I've ever seen that before and it comes out so cool the rings oh how different oh is it for you to do that work as opposed to and I'm not saying you're better or 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 it's you're worse or better but you know how different is it from your other castmates like really being on computers all day or just you know shipping I things mean, or yeah this goes casting. back to this goes back to like I said at the fame thing we're all that we're all just, we're all just people right and um I don't, I mean, I really pay attention. I, I mean, I pay attention in the sense I care about them and their jobs and how they're doing as people. But I, um, I mean, listen, I, 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 what, what they do is, is something I probably couldn't do, you know? Um, and, and I have a lot of respect for their hustle and their success and um, all their achievements. And they're really, I mean, they're, they're all actually really kick ass at what they do. So um, I, um, it just so happens that with what I do, like it's loud, it's noisy. Like I can't, like, I, I, it, it, it wasn't ideal. It was hot as shit. Like it was so hot every day and I'd be out there in the sun. I mean, that's why I don't have a shirt on. I wanted to wear a shirt. I had dust and metal all over me. It was itching like crazy, but, um, I was sweating my ass off out there. Um, but I couldn't work, you know, inside, like it, it you can't do that. I mean, I, people would have literally probably thrown me off the deck or something, you know, it was like, it's not happening. Um, even outside, I'd be like, are you guys okay? Like, I'm going to be banging for like the next 15. They'd be like, go ahead. You know, they could hear it, but they, they would um, be okay with it. Cause they knew I had, I had orders and things to get out and get done. So, you know, my workbench, <laughs> my workbench is funny. I, I didn't, you know, with, with COVID, you were not really able to go to the store and get out being in quarantine. So um, I basically, had scrap wood that was just there and i had to try and find a way to make a, a, a workbench it i mean listen it wasn't pretty um but it served its purpose and it's and cool that was the coolest really thing i saw on um reality <laughs> TVs so far I, I just thought it was really cool that you did it from scratch and i've never seen anyone do it and you're selling it and you don't complain i'm like a Jewish yenta over here complaining about everything and you're just like ah you know i took the tree and i just carved it you know oh yeah cool. yeah well yeah, the rings are, the rings, they definitely keep me busy. And um, yeah, I mean, you'll stay tuned. Maybe you'll see more of that. Where can we buy um, the rings and the jewelry right now? Yeah, my, everything, my apparel, my candles, my rings, my fragrances. Um, they're all on my, on my e-com store. They're all at um, rcoshop.com. So you can find it all there. So, yeah. I want to talk to you about, so one, what was the thing you would say led I know we talked a little bit about it earlier, but with Lindsay, what do you think led for you guys to get to this moment we see in the trailer where you guys get hot and heavy? Now, we don't know because we only see, we only hear voices. We only hear mm -hmm. you guys saying hi, but one can mm -hmm. assume, I don't know. I had a gut feeling every time I saw the Instagram stories, I just felt like you guys belong together. You guys make, whether you guys are together romantically or not, I think you guys are meant to be friends. Like you, you know, when people are just meant to be best friends forever, like that's you and her. What led up to that moment for you? Um, I mean, you know, I, I think when, when it comes down to it, Lindsay and I just have a lot of love and care for each other. Um, you know, she, she knows what I was dealing with. And um, I, I know what, you know, she was going through. 
Um, and I think you find comfort in, in that and in, in knowing that, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, there's, there's somebody who's got a big heart and cares. Like it's, it's easy to, to be able to confide in that person and, and talk with them. Um, and we just, it just, it just works. I don't know how to explain it. Um, and, and I, I mean, listen, I love Lindsay, uh, and I care about her dearly. So, um, you know, for me, and it, it was, it was, it was interesting. Cause I, like I said, I'm, I'm friends with, with Stravi actually as well. So, and I care about him a lot and, and love him like, like my brother, you know, and, um, it, it, it just, you just find yourself, I feel like connecting. I'm just friendly. How's that dynamic though, between, um, that's interesting. Like you maintained a relationship with Stravi, which is very, very cool of you to do. And what's cooler of Lindsay to do is that I guess she's open about that, right? She doesn't have any ill will. She talked about it on watch what happens live the other night that she has good feelings for Stravi right now, like at this point where they stand. Um, how is it for you to be in between two people you love or do you feel that way? I mean, listen, as long as you, as long as you just care and love and, Listen, I mean, I, I just want them both to have the, the best lives they can have, whether they're together or not. Like it, it's, I support them no matter what. So, you know, I'm always here for, for them as a friend any day. So. <laughs> I love that. Um, what's your relationship also? We see in the trailer upcoming scenes, um, you and Kyle and Amanda. I know last season, you know, there were some things that you had to talk to Amanda, you kind of, went at it with Amanda, you and Amanda kind of had words, but then you guys came to resolution. How is it this season? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I definitely, um, as you'll have to tune in really, but I feel like I definitely, um, I definitely would make Amanda and I made some ground, covered some ground. Um, same with Paige, uh, you know, unfortunately in, 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 in my first season, um, you know, they were just being a good friend to their friend and, and I don't blame them for that. But like, like I said, what, what sucks is their friend wasn't relaying truth to them on, on our situation. She was relaying whatever she wanted to relay to them to get whatever she wanted. I, I don't know. Like, so, so, so I, I don't, that sucked for me because it made them have this like flawed view of me as a person and left a bad taste in their mouth. Probably like, you know what I'm saying? And, and that was, that sucked. It was, it was super awkward, but I just tried my best just to be nice no matter what. And, um, and I, I definitely, and listen, I love and care about both, both Paige and, and, um, and Amanda. And, um, I, I've nothing, nothing bad to say. I, I, and even with, you know, with, 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 you know, with Kyle, as you say, with, with the trailer, um, you know, things happen, but it, it all stems from, the, the root of that is stems from um, someone else not necessarily being um, I, I, like I can't get mad at, at other 100%, people. A hundred percent. It's guess. like they're not. Or, it's stems from people not being, I guess, a hundred percent honest no, or necessarily. Yeah, they're just they're just basing their views off of what's being told to them, and they're people with emotions who who love and care about people, and you know, people have reactions based off that. Unfortunately. You know, you just have to tune in. But I, but I, I, I love him. I, I, I love Kyle. I mean, they're listen, and, and him and him and Amanda are just the cutest. You know what I mean? They're adorable. <laughs> so, um, it, they're, they're awesome, and, and, and I, I have a lot of respect for them and, and all the stuff they've done with their business. And, um, yeah, they're, they're awesome. Where do you stand with Sierra now? I love you guys together. Listen, I love you guys romantically, but I also yeah. love you guys as friends. Listen, I, I'll tell you right now. Sierra's uh she's a catch like she's a good she's a really good person she's beautiful she's you know a great job um, she's a big heart very she cares about people respects people she's classy there's just so many things about her that are good um and uh and and, and I know that <laughs> um yeah but we um uh, I, I, I really, we talk a bit, uh, via like text or Instagram a, a bit, but, um, I, I know personally, I, I really needed to, to take a break from, from everything. Um, because I, it was like, yeah. Um, so, so we haven't talked a lot. Um, and, and it's not that I don't want to talk to her. Um, it's just things got as you, you'll see, you just need to tune in.
but but listen, I, I I love her. I've got nothing bad nothing bad to say about her. Um, I hope she's super like happy and good, and and hopefully as time goes on, we'll, we'll be we'll be talking more. What's one thing you've learned um, about being on reality TV, and what can we anticipate for your career? Your, you know your future. Uh, um, I feel like every year that I've been a part of of this. Um, I've, I've grown as a person. There's things that I've learned uh, that have been brought to my attention. Um, I, I've all, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot about other people and how they act too. Like um, if they're, if they're real or if they're not in the sense of like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm always very real and just want to like be cool with people. And um, it's, it's people, like others character. Like you learn about a lot about other people. Um, and, it, and that makes it interesting, <laughs> but, um, and as far as my career, uh, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm trying to build my business. I'm never going to not come choppy. I love these kids. And I love what I do there. Um, and, and as far as acting, listen, I'm, I'm, I continue to audition. I continue to film things when, when the opportunities present themselves. Um, I'm producing my first feature film, which nobody knows about. Yeah, I don't, it's okay. I was like, we don't need to get into too much. Wow. About that, What's, well, yeah, what, whatever you can tell us about. Cause I would love, I mean, I would yeah. love to see you in that. Um, well, a buddy of mine from acting class that I met years ago, um, he's done some pretty good stuff as an actor and him and I, uh, created a story like four years ago. And then he kind of took it upon himself to really create the whole thing. Um, we're, we're moving along. We're tracking along pretty well, actually. Um, and you know, movies take a long time to make, you know, dealing with funding and, and everything like that. It's, it's, that's the hardest part. So, um, but we're, we're managing, so it's, it's moving forward. Um, so there's that. And then, um, you know, whatever, whatever comes my way, I guess I, I, like I said, I, I'm always studying. I'm always trying to, you know, like in my downtime, I'm playing guitar, writing music, studying stuff, tracking, working on things. And, um, I, you know, I, I don't know. So I don't, I don't know. All I know is I'm busy. I've got shit going on, but yeah, um, you're busy. You're yeah. giving back. You're being kind too, which on top. Yeah. Of well, you know, trying to do, that's another thing too. Like when I said that earlier, um, you know, I recently was just like, I'm, I have some, something with the United way actually I have to get on a phone call after this. Um, I'm doing something with the United way back in Minnesota. Um, and then, uh, you know, trying to do as much charity work as possible. I was doing some stuff with the, uh, lymphoma and leukemia society um and um you know that was tough for me because i got so busy when i was doing it but um i want to do more with them and then i work you know with other charities like by we i've done some stuff with them in the past for animals and you know when you have a platform you gotta you gotta use it and no matter how busy you are you need to try and find time to give back i mean god puts you in a position to have the ability to have a positive impact and if you don't do it shame on you <laughs> you know I love that that that's um, important yeah so um so yeah i mean that's that's my future i don't know well i don't know what tomorrow is going to bring you. I, I listen <laughs> i'm rooting for you but i do see a lot of big things for you i see that you're going to transition i i'm looking forward to hearing a single from you a music single i'm yeah. looking forward to hear you know a book i mean the sky's the limit for you your movies your acting your reality i love summer house we all love summer house congratulations on a great premiere on a great season so far. Luke, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you for taking out the time because I know you're a busy man. Um, make sure they can follow you. Where can everybody follow you on all social media platforms right now? And check out yeah. his stuff. I love your merch. I'm going to buy your merch. I love yeah. also that you're always for a good cause. You're always for a good time. You're a good man, my friend. And thank you oh, thank for you. giving me that the support. Um, Luke gave me the support today and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Where can everybody yeah. follow you? Um, well, my Instagram is just Luke O'Bronson. Uh, <laughs> um, Twitter is, I think like, I don't even know. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm like, it's like Luke. People in their thirties don't use Twitter, by the way. I think no, we just use Instagram. I, I, I didn't, but I'm trying because like I have to. Um, and then, uh, my, 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 um, company Instagram is just Ranger underscore 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 co because there was already a ranger company arco is short for ranger company by the way just so you know oh that's cool um, to know i didn't know yeah that. yeah so that's why and the reason it's it, i did that is because i thought ranger company was a little masculine out and it's it's a, a unisex brand I, you know, anyway. um and then uh, 
um, my, my website is just rcoshop.com for, for any of the, the Artho gear. Hey, it's Luke O'Bronson from Summerhouse, and you're watching me on the Chanel in the City podcast. Mm-hmm.